Homo sapiens is the sole survivor of a metapopulation of hominins that lived on our planet during the last ice age, including Homo neanderthalensis. The causes of the disappearance of the Neanderthals, Europe's only human metapopulation prior to the arrival of Homo sapiens, have been debated by scientists for decades. Various hypotheses have been advanced to explain this extinction, including Neanderthal cognitive, adaptive and cultural inferiority. What's more, we have come to a point where the old models of human evolution are constraining progress in our understanding of the past. In fact, there is growing debate as to whether Neanderthals and Homo sapiens are, in fact, the same species. For example, the recently identified ancient humans known as Denisovans, who are sister species to Neanderthals, are referred to as a population, rather than being given a species name, whereas Neanderthals are given the species name Homo neanderthalensis. Therefore, if Neanderthals and Denisovans are sister species, then Neanderthals should also be considered a population, or more specifically a metapopulation of Homo sapiens. A metapopulation, in ecology, is a regional group of connected populations of a species. For a given species, each metapopulation is continually being modified by increases, births and immigrations, and decreases, deaths and emigrations of individuals, as well as by the emergence and dissolution of local populations contained within it. As local populations of a given species fluctuate in size, they become vulnerable to extinction during periods when their numbers are low. Viewed through the lens of dynamic changes in connectivity, or metapopulations to be technical, the interpretation of the available data changes. Instead of a series of population splits branching off an ancestral tree, changes in connectivity between different populations over time seem a more reasonable assumption and appear to explain several patterns of genomic diversity not explained by current alternative models. Metapopulations are the kind of model you'd expect if people were moving around and mixing over long periods and wide geographic areas. A metapopulation model helps us to find a way to acknowledge the paleontological, archaeological and genetic evidence for a recent African origin with limited gene flow from non-African metapopulations, such as Neanderthals, without falling into overly polemic and restrictive debates. Any model that would claim to represent human evolution would have to satisfactorily explain patterns of variation in genetic, morphological and cultural data components and be consistent with the climatic changes that have shaped our ecologies during most of the last one million years. A structured metapopulation model does this without denying any of the latest evidence. It doesn't require us to find a mythical region of origin or to date clean splitting events whose meaning is far from clear. Population tree models force us to think in such terms and this can be very misleading. The past was a confusing time, and those old models, while largely discredited now, have been helpful for making sense of an archaeological record with many gaps in it. Models can be very useful, even when they are wrong, but when they are prioritized over the data, they can constrain progress. Furthermore, convergent evidence from different scientific fields stress the importance of considering a metapopulation structure in our models of human evolution. This complex history of population subdivision should thus lead us to question current models of ancient population size changes and perhaps reinterpret some of the old bottlenecks as changes in connectivity. If we look at the available data through the lens of changes in connectivity, the human archaeological record starts to make a lot more sense. We need such flexibility to be able to make sense of the past, or we get lost in a malaise of ever-increasing named species, failed trajectories and population trees that never existed. Science always favours the simpler explanation, and it is becoming increasingly difficult to stick to old narratives when they have to become overcomplicated in order to stay relevant. Our human origins cannot be denied but we definitely don't yet have the resolution to include or exclude different bits of evidence simply because they don't fit with a particular view. The fact is, we need better reasons than that. Neanderthals first appeared around 300,000 years ago, 
and they quickly populated the entire continent, reaching a peak around 45,000 years ago. Then, at the pinnacle of their power, they vanished, almost inexplicably. Although this has been known for some time, a new study shows how quickly they vanished. The study, titled A Critical Review of the Middle Paleolithic in Western Central Europe from its beginnings to its rapid decline, examines this topic. Neanderthals completely disappeared just 3,000 years after their population peaked in Western Central Europe, according to the study. With Homo sapiens advancing from the south, Neanderthals appear to have taken refuge in northern Germany, on the Elbe and Weser River, on the North German plains, before they rapidly went extinct. Classic Neanderthals lived in the Middle Paleolithic, also known as the Middle Old Stone Age. This period encompasses the time from roughly 200,000 years to 40,000 years before our times. More than 50% of the known Neanderthal settlement sites in Germany can be dated to the Middle Paleolithic. More precisely, they date back 60,000 to 43,000 years before our time, and the Neanderthal population peak seems to lie in this period. The number of sites, their analysis, and the analysis of the artifacts found at these settlements indicate that the Neanderthal population in Germany was subject to extreme demographic fluctuations. During the Middle Paleolithic, there appear to have been several migrations, population increase and decline, extinction in certain areas, and then a return of settlers to these areas. For example, for the time period between 110,000 to 70,000 years ago, there are only four known settlement sites. In stark contrast, in the following period, from 70,000 to 43,000 years ago, there are 94 sites. Tellingly, they are mostly clustered in one region in the far north, but this type of density is unknown in the prior Neanderthal record. One possibility is that Neanderthals were being forced out of southern Europe, and the survivors took refuge in northwestern Europe during this period. First off, this disappearance, which culminated in their species extinction 2,000 years later, is ludicrously rapid. Secondly, this evidence suggests that from the very height of their population, Neanderthals went extinct within just a couple of thousand years. In less than 1,000 years after this demographic peak, however, there was a rapid decline and the Neanderthal disappeared from the scene. In simple terms, this extinction looks like a blitzkrieg, in which Neanderthals were wiped out by colonizing modern humans with advanced long-range projectile weapons. It may have been a combination of different factors, including technological innovation of the bow and arrow and other inventions over the Mousterian toolkits of the Middle Paleolithic, which were widely used by Neanderthals. Moreover, more sophisticated hunting techniques, with possible use of domesticated wolves, may have given Homo sapiens important long-term advantages, which would have contributed to the gradual competitive exclusion of Neanderthals. The question of what killed off the Neanderthals is one of the greatest scientific mysteries of our time. Our evolutionary cousins vanished almost without a trace around 40,000 years ago, and no one can agree on what doomed them to the abyss of history. A recent study, titled Quantifying the Potential Causes of Neanderthal Extinction, Abrupt Climate Change versus Competition and Interbreeding, presents a spatially resolved numerical hominin dispersal model with empirically constrained key parameters that simulates the migration and interaction of Homo sapiens and Neanderthals in the rapidly varying climatic environment of the last ice age. Importantly, these climate events are characterized by rapid warming and slow cooling. A rapid opening of new climatically suitable corridors may have been beneficial for the dispersal of Homo sapiens hunters and gatherers in Eurasia. The gradual cooling may have given them enough time to retreat southward to other ecological niches. The climate simulations document that rapid temperature and vegetation changes associated with these climate events were not major drivers of global Neanderthal extinction between 50,000 and 35,000 years ago, but played important roles regionally in particular over northern Europe. 
According to a series of experiments, which conducted a realistic extinction of the Neanderthal population, this can only be simulated when Homo sapiens is chosen to be considerably more effective in exploiting scarce glacial food resources as compared to Neanderthals. Moreover, the rapid demise of Neanderthals occurred 50,000 to 40,000 years ago, shortly after modern humans dispersed into subtropical and extratropical Eurasia. According to the most commonly accepted hypothesis, the Neanderthals would have competed with Homo sapiens for food resources, and the replacement of Neanderthals would have been favoured by Homo sapiens' greater technical skills, their greater cognitive abilities, Neanderthals' narrower diet, and lower social capacities and network. We now know that Neanderthals descended from a European branch of hominins, and that their differentiation in Europe was the result of a long evolutionary process. Nonetheless, Neanderthals, the only humans on European territory, vanished in an evolutionary second when Homo sapiens arrived. It's still unclear why the species went extinct. Perhaps it was because of the evolution of Homo sapiens. Is it a coincidence that humans arrived in Europe at the height of the Neanderthal reign and that our evolutionary cousins soon fell into a sudden terminal decline? Probably not, but this question will keep scientists busy for decades to come.